to the front pages where you've seen one of them already. Here's some more. The Sunday Times says 12 people face jail over hacking uh, and a picture of uh, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, as was there. She's one of two women dominating the front pages, the other being Rebecca Brooks. Uh, the Observer, Ashdown, I warned number 10 about the huge danger of hiring Coulson, Paddy Ashdown, the latest of the people coming forward saying that he'd warned David Cameron about that. The Independent on Sunday, War of the World, uh, about the future of the news international. There's the other woman dominating the front pages, uh, Rebecca Brooke there. And the Mail on Sunday, Bear, Blair bid to silence MP who exposed Murdoch. We should say that Tony Blair says that's not true. Kate Middleton again. And there's Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch's troubles only get worse in Scotland on Sunday. A rather odd story in a sense that says the Church of England is threatening to pull millions from the News, news Corp over scandal. I think many of us didn't realise that the Church of England was spending <laughs> millions of pounds in newspapers. Anyway, Fraser Nelson and the Man at the welcome to you both. Thanks for coming in. Um, Fraser, you've been a columnist for a long time on the news of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's start with you and that final historic edition. Yeah, I've got the very first issue of the News of the World up on my wall at home and it's funny to be holding the very last one here. And I think they've done it brilliantly. They've just shown all these incredible front pages which have kind of punctuated British history actually. When you walk into the News of the World they've got them all up on the wall. And it just reminds you that this is the most successful newspaper the world has ever known. Nobody is, at its peak, it sold 8 million. Nobody has mm. ever done more than that. And it's funny, when newspapers die, normally they run out of readers, run out of money. This is really quite something it, this else. This has never happened before that a proprietor has closed a successful newspaper. No, because there's always the view that you can, you can basically cleanse brands, you can mm. change editor, change ownership, bring them back again. So it just shows how serious that Rupert Murdoch takes this. He sees it obviously as a kind of threat to his global empire and he wants to send a message to everybody in Beijing, etc. If you um, screw up like this, you will pay the price. But nobody can quite believe you know, uh, the commercial audacity. But He's the not fact a sentimental fellow, is he? <laughs> clearly not. Well, clearly not. But the it, funny thing is, it's difficult, certainly as a journalist, not to be sentimental sure. about you know, this, this incredible newspaper and all the good that it's done, which mm. is something that nobody will listen to at the moment, such are the scale of the sins of the private investigators. And you know, for those journalists who were involved in the paper, this is the great irony. All these bad things were done by the men in raincoats, the PIs who were at the end of a phone, who would do all sorts of methods. But, all, but also authorised by the people right at the top, yes. many of whom are still there, and that was unlike a huge, the journalists. Yeah, that was a huge mistake for which the news, newspaper has paid with its life. Amanda? It is, I mean, it is incredible. If, if it's true that there's £100,000 that was going to these private investigators every year, I mean, you know, as a former newspaper editor and executive, you don't just, £100 has to go through the books, you yeah. know. It has to be seen by executives at some level. Mm. Who they are, who knows. But it is incredible. And just looking at the front pages, I thought it was quite sweet. Colin Myler, who the editor whom mm. I worked with for on and off for 20 years, who is a very fine man and a very honest man. When we couldn't find him on Today newspaper, he'd usually be down at the local Catholic church um, <laughs> saying mass. I mean, he's mm. so clean, that guy. Um, but he's, uh, he's written this lovely um, um, you know, obituary to the papers, I guess what you have to call it. And he says, uh, an advertisement for our first ever edition, it announced that the news of the world uh, as the novelty of nations and the wonder of the world, as worthy of the mansion as the cottage. And that is incredibly true. I mean, that's one of the things about the news of the world, is that so many um, people who are very influential, act, well, read it for choice as well as when they were in it. Well, what jumps out to you when you, they've re reprinted the first page here, it's, it's inside, it? and it gives an emission statement, in, which was exactly the same as it is today. A paper, it says, which will have enough intellectual calibre to engage the rich because they want to know simply mm. by the sheer number it sells amongst the poor. This is the kind of paper they want to be read in Buckingham Palace and down the pub, and it still was. And it was, was. Yeah. and it actually was. What I was struck by, uh, you know, going through it was... Um, the, 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 what, there's not a great deal of contrition about the recent events and a sort of sense, I mean of course it's written for their readers mm -hmm. but it's also seemed to me to be in a sense it was written for Rupert Murdoch saying look what we've achieved, look of what course. you're killing off, mm -hmm. um, remember us 
Yeah, there will be. I mean, just think how high the emotions were running there. These mm. are journalists who had nothing to do with the sins committed. Mm. If you, they spent the last five years, Colin Myler had completely making sure everything was right, and they pay the price for it. So you can mm. imagine the emotions as they were putting yeah. that paper together. Yes. Um, lots of interesting coverage. I'm going to say I elsewhere in the, in you the have, press of this. You have to give um, Carol Malone, who's the star columnist, she's written her whole... Normally you only get to write about um, the death of a father or a mother in your column. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever read about the death of a newspaper. And she puts it really succinctly here. She says, This red top monolith has been a life force in Britain journalism and love it or hate it. No politician, no crook, no pervert, no celebrity, no corporation has ever been able to ignore it. And, and that mm. was true. And mm. that's why, despite the terrible things that happened and the ghastly things over Millie Downer, the hacking, it, yeah. is, it is a sad day for... for okay. Now, I said, um, you said that journalists are sentimental and so journalists are, but also it's a ruthless trade oh, and you can, you can pick that up from some other front pages. Look at this. This is incredible. Because, of course, you have to, suddenly there are, as, uh, you know, there are um, seven million readers out there who some of them will want another Sunday newspaper. So what does the Daily Star do? Wills to be Beckham's godfather. Oh, yeah. Um, the people, um, they've got Wills and Kate's. We want three children. So they've got a private interview with them about that. All of them, Cheryl Cole on the front, Sunday morning. Mirror, don't go back to Cheryl. Cheryl Cole again, big Harry Potter promotion. And what they're all doing is doing that classic red top, um, a celebrity, a bit of royals, and a whacking big offer to try and get the readers in. Well, there are seven million readers up for grabs now. The question is, where will they go? But the funny thing is, in America, when they shut newspapers, the readers have just gone. Yeah, and they don't go anywhere it else. is possible. Our industry is in contraction. It could well be that this is simply accelerating this yeah. one-way reverse. It